friends and greetings for today. Welcome back to the tutorial on ISCQB test automation engineer. We are in chapter two and looking at the next topic, which is the first topic of this chapter is 2.1 SUT factors influencing the test automation. Let's understand more about the same. When you talk about preparing for the test automation, one of the important aspect is to understand what are the several factors from the application point where it can impact or influence the test automation. So generally there are a lot of things which we understood recently in the chapter one, but to add something more to it, we have different things to be understood here. So when evaluating the context of the SUT and its environment, factors that influence the test automation need to be identified to determine an appropriate solution. These may include the following, where we have several parameters on the screen right now here, that is SUT interfaces. Of course, the interface plays a really vital role. When you talk about the test cases or to you know, perform any kind of action on the application, what kind of interface does it have? Is it having a direct UI uh, or maybe you probably have certain kind of protocols being used or maybe you have different APIs interacting within? So how does your interface work? And based on that, you will have your automation tool to assist you with those kind of interference to the SUT. What if your application or t t testing tool doesn't have a provision to penetrate through the APIs and get into the application? So that's where the interfaces are important. Sometimes it's not really important that your SUT is alone every time. Probably you have integrated a lot of different applications from the market to your application to make it a complete option. So most of the time the e-commerce websites and all make use of third-party softwares which is an add-on like COTS commercial of the self like payment gateways and all can be imported and integrated with your existing application which further requires an understanding to integrate or uh, utilize your test automation to apply on that. Similarly, we have levels of intrusion. So different test automation approaches have different level of intrusions. The greater the number of changes that are required to be made to the SUT, especially for automated testing, the higher the level of intrusion applies. Again, further, when we talk about the architectures, you know, the different SUT have different architectures. So different SUT architectures may require different test automation solutions. And what do you mean by solutions here? That is TAS, TAS, test automation solution. It basically stands for what kind of setup, what kind of settings, what kind of environment preparation is required within the tool to work on these kind of architecture, like make sure that this particular function is working, this particular URL is launched, and on this URL, this particular object is available, and then you further interact with it. So lots of prerequisites are need to be validated with respect to the architectures. At the end, but of course, you can talk about the size and complexity of the SUT, consider the size and complexity of the current SUT and plan for the future development, because it's going to be growing, 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 then of course you need to add a lot of test cases, a lot of test scripts to include to the same. Coming to the next, when you talk about the same here, we are closing it in terms of like, there are several other factors also, which are related to influencing the test automation, which is like size and complexity, available software interferences, and of course, these are all major factors. But of course, at some point of time, the development of the test automation should start well before the SUT, and you know that the application is not at all ready. So application is under development, and you are trying to create a test where you don't even know how your application would look like, and this would be going a little complex. Now, a little complex in the sense like you need to determine what kind of design, what kind of architecture is being implemented for this so that the environment can be created and it can be prepared well for that. So it, it really plays a vital role when you talk about several factors which influence the test automation. Even when the SUT does not exist yet, test automation planning can very well start. For example, when the requirements okay, are known, candidates for automation can be selected. So it's not really so complicated uh, where you think that if the application is not present, what will you do, how will you plan for it? But yes, it can be planned because you know a lot of information about the same. 
So from these requirements, you can further identify what kind of test, what kind of environment, what kind of setup is required. Planning for the automation test can begin for those candidates, including identifying the requirements for the automation and determining the test automation strategy as well. And of course, when the architecture and technical design is being developed, the design of the software interface to support testing can be undertaken. So there is a lot of information which is pre-available to you all based on those information you can uh, predict, you can plan, you can create a strategy and based on that you can start building up your automation frameworks which can be executed as soon as your product is available. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with the next tutorial on the same chapter. Stay tuned for that. Should you have any query, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address you further beyond this. So till then, keep learning, keep understanding, and keep exploring about this topic. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.